Ellie Cohen, former Foreign Minister and now Minister for Energy and Infrastructure. Thank you for talking to I24 News. Now we're eight months into the war in Gaza. Yesterday, Hamas managed to fire a, a barrage of rockets at central Israel. Is this a sign that the IDF has not done enough to degrade their military capacities. I think this just comes to prove how necessary it was to operate in Rafah. It was necessary to operate in Gaza in order to increase the pressure on Hamas and to release the hostages. It is also necessary in order to prevent this route of smuggling and tunnels coming in from Egypt into Rafah. And we intend to act against all of the Hamas battalions that are still in Rafa. Hamas is a terror organization. That's how it was defined by most of the European European countries, the U.S., and most of the countries of the free world. I want to ask you about some of the splits in the government. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's own defense minister, Yoav Gallant, has criticized him for not coming up with a plan for a post-war Gaza. Uh, he says it's either Israeli military occupation or it's Fatah, some sort of Palestinian authority. Uh, the war cabinet member Benny Gantz says he wants some kind of international force uh, to take over. Uh, where do you stand and do you think that the prime minister urgently needs to come up with a vision? The main thing we need to do right now is to completely destroy Hamas's military and governmental capabilities. When they set out to uh, finish off the Nazis in Germany, nobody thought what would come after them. And when they acted against Al-Qaeda, ISIS and others, nobody asked what will come next. But I can tell you what will come next. First of all, Hamas will no longer be there. The state of Israel has the intention to have security control over Gaza, but it has no intention to uh, be involved in any kind of civilian civil uh, control over Gaza. But I think what will happen during the interim period, the international uh, elements like the US, Europe, the moderate Arab countries, they will be in charge of civilian activity until the point in which we can make progress on Gaza. So you disagree with Yoav Gallant. I think that as Minister of Defense, Yoav Gallant should first of all act against Hamas. That's the main thing. That's the most crucial thing. And I expect the free world to stand with Israel. On October 6th, we had a ceasefire. The ones who are responsible for the murder of 1,500 Israeli civilians, the murder of women, the slaughtering and massacring of children, those who are responsible for the suffering of the Gazans, the ones who right now, as we're speaking, are holding a one-year-old baby in captivity, people who are older than 70 who are still being held captive. So it's only one entity that's responsible for the suffering in Gaza. That's Hamas, which is being funded by Iran. And the state of Israel has been attacked over the past few months from seven different places, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Iran. It has been under attack. And we see this struggle between the free world and the militant and radical world and the world mustn't support, mustn't provide any tailwind to terrorism as it is uh, performed by Hamas. And the State of Israel operates according to international law. It, it does do everything it can in order to bring in humanitarian aid to Gaza. Okay, I want to ask you, um, obviously, about the hostages. Um, you just alluded to them there. 125 hostages still being held. Um, the families, of course, are increasingly desperate. Some, but not all, of the families say that in negotiations, which have just restarted, the option to end the war in Gaza must be on the table. Otherwise, there is simply no chance of getting any of those hostages back alive. Do you think that is a possibility? The option to stop the war, as far as we're concerned, it's not on the agenda right now. We in Israel cannot continue to live here with these desp despicable murders living next to us, people who have mutilated uh, people, raped women, burned them alive, and therefore we will not agree to stop the war and we are going to continue to act against Hamas until we find the very last one of them. The ICC may issue arrest warrants for Prime Minister Netanyahu and Minister Gallant. Uh, the ICJ is considering South Africa's allegations of genocide uh, and has warned Israel about its conduct in Rafah, did not tell it to stop, but has warned it about its conduct there. Um, we've just had a, an incident this morning. Two senior Hamas 
commanders were killed, um, but some civilians uh, were also killed. Will this add to the pressure on Israel to stop its operation in Rafah? We are going to continue with our operations in Gaza. Of course, we will uh, do everything we can in order not to harm any innocent civilians. We are targeting the leaders of the Hamas, but the decision of the prosecutor from the ICC is scandalous. It's anti-Semitic. It's just like people will say that they're uh, putting to trial Hitler, Churchill, and Roosevelt that they're prosecuting all three of them. And President Biden has said that Hamas are even worse than ISIS. Uh, Chancellor Schultz in his visit in Israel has defined them as the new Nazis. So the balance which the prosecutor seeks to make is actually scandalous. It's inconceivable. We seek to protect and defend ourselves from that attack. We gave the, Palesti the, the Gaza to the Palestinians until the very last inch. Over the past 18 years, there was not one Israeli in Gaza, and they're the ones who chose to commit that crime. So now this uh, prosecutor, Karim, seeks uh, to weaken us so that we won't fight terrorism, but we will not accept any anti-Semitic attack, and we are going to act against terrorism, against the murderer, against all those because what he's actually saying that if a country is being attacked, it cannot defend itself. But the state of Israel is a democracy. It's the only democracy in the Middle East. It complies with international law. It has a highly developed judiciary system. And I hope that the judges who are supposed to decide on this motion will uh, dismiss it outright. And I am now hearing from a lot of countries in the West, and mainly from the US and Germany and many other countries in Europe that are rejecting the uh, prosecutor's motion to issue arrest warrants against uh, Netanyahu and the Minister of Defense. Well, part of the case against Israel um, is that its critics say it is trying to permanently displace the population in Gaza, uh, make Gaza uninhabitable. How can Israel defend itself against these allegations? Uh, you yourself said uh, on 18... Of October, the territory of Gaza will shrink after the war. And, and more recently, you tweeted from the river to the sea, there will only be the state of Israel. I mean, how can Israel defend itself uh, against these allegations when ministers such as yourself make comments like that? We are saying very clearly, we will not agree to the establishment of a Palestinian state here. There are 22 Arab countries, but there's only one country, which is the homeland of the Jews, and that is the state of Israel. And we've already seen that there were leaders who have uh, told us, give Gaza to the Palestinians, it will become Singapore. But instead of Singapore, what we got is Hamastan. Now they're suggesting that we establish a Taliban state in other places. So first of all, this will undermine the security of the state of Israel. And also, what kind of a life did the Gazans have? There was no Israeli there. Did the people of Gaza have democracy? The answer is no. Were there any women's rights there? No. Were there any rights for the LGBT? community? The answer is no. Was their economic situation good? The answer is no. They received the donations from Qatar. So what kind of a life did they give them? So all those who are now telling us to establish a Palestinian state are not even willing to take in one Palestinian refugee in their countries. So the issue of a change in the population in Gaza, it's because we do not want to harm any innocent civilians, so there should definitely be some kind of a security strip between us and Gaza, because our people, I was, I visited these Moshavim and Kibbutzim, the people there, they're the ones who wanted peace the most, and the Palestinians used to work in these Kibbutzim and Moshavim, and the Palestinians entered their home and massacred them. I was in the Kutz family home where they killed the father and the mother and the three children on the that Saturday, they had planned to fly kites in the evening as a symbol of life together. And in response, they entered their home and massacred them.